Hello world. Hello my friends, subscribers, non-subscribers, and trolls alike. Hello, I hope you're all having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. I don't know if you've ever heard of this, the Ash Conformity Experiments. I'll read it out and you'll see how it plays into today's society. In psychology, the Ash Conformity Experiments, or the Ash Paradigm, were a series of studies directed by Solomon Ash, studying if and how individuals yield to or defend a majority group and the effect of such influences on beliefs and opinions. Developed in the 1950s, the methodology remains in use by many researchers. Uses include the study of conformity and effects of task importance, age, gender, and culture. Initial conformity experiment method. In 1951, Solomon Ash conducted his first conformity laboratory experiments at the Swatholm College, laying the foundation for his remaining conformity studies. The experiment was published in two occasions. Groups of eight male college students participated in simple perpetual tasks. In reality, all but one of the participants were actors, and the true focus of the study was about how the remaining participant would react to the actor's behaviour. The actors knew the true aim of the experiment, but were introduced to the subject as other participants. Each student viewed a card with a line on it, followed by another with three lines labeled A, B, and C. See the accompanying figure. This is it here. One of these lines was the same as that on the first card, and the other two lines were clearly longer or shorter, i.e. near 100% minus the rate of correct responding cards were expect was expected. <coughs> Before the experiment, all actors were given detailed instructions on how they should respond to each trial card presentation. They would always unanimously nominate one comparator, but on certain trials they would give correct response on and on others, an incorrect response. The group was seated such that the real participant was always responding last. Subjects completed 18 trials. The first two trials, both the subject and the actors, were given the obvious correct answer. On the third trial, the actors were given all the same wrong answer. This wrong responding reoccurred on 11 of the remaining 15 trials. It was the subject's behavior on 12 of these critical trials that formed the aim of the study, to test how many subjects would change their answers to conform to these of the seven actors, despite it being wrong. Subjects were interviewed after the study, including being debriefed about the true purpose of the study. These post-test interviews shed valuable light on the study, both because they only reveal subjects often were just going along, and because they reveal considerable individual differences to Ash. Conditional Additional trials with slightly altered conditions were also run, including having a single actor give the correct answer. Ash's experiment also had a condition in which participants were tested alone with the experiment in the room. In total, there were 50 subjects in the experimental condition and 37 in the control condition. Results. In the control group, with no pressure to conform actors, the error rate on the critical stimuli was less than 1%. The actor condition also, the majority of participant responses remain correct at 63.2%, but a sizable majority of responses confirm to the actor's incorrect answer of 36.8%. The responses revealed a strong individual differences. Only 5% of participants were always swayed by the crowd. 25% of that simple consistently defied majority opinion, with the rest conforming on some trials. An examination of Critical trials in the experimental group revealed that one third of all recipients' responses were incorrect. These incorrect responses often match the incorrect responses of the majority group, i.e., actors. Overall, 75% of the participants gave at least one incorrect answer out of the 12 clinical trials. In his opinion regarding the study results, Ash put it this way that intelligent, well meaning young people are willing to call white black is a matter of concern. And this is where we're at today with the confusion in society. Oh, jeez, we are confused. 
interview responses. Participants' interview responses reveal a complex mixture of individual differences and subjects' reaction to the experiment situation, with distinct reactions linked to factors such as confidence, self-doubt, the desire to be normative, and resolving perceived confusion over the nature of the task. Ash's report included interviews of a subject that remained independent, and yet another yielded. Each proved a descriptive amount count following disclosure of the true nature of the experiment. The independent subject said that he felt happy and relieved and added, I do not deny that at times I had a feeling to go with it. I'll go along with the rest. Page 182. At the end of the other end of the spectrum, one yielding subject who conformed 11 in the 12 clinical trials said, I suspected about the middle, but I tried to push it out of my mind. Page 182. Ash points out that although yielding subjects were suspicious, he was not sufficiently confident to go against the majority. Attitude of independent responders. Subjects who do not conform to the majority reacted either with confidence, they experienced conflict between their idea with an obvious answer, and the group's incorrect answer, but stuck with their own answer, or were withdrawn. The latest subjects stuck with their perception, but did not experience conflict in doing so. Some participants also exhibited doubt, responding in accordance with their perception by but questioning their own judgment while nonetheless sticking to their correct response, expressing this as needing to behave as they have been asked to do in the task. Attitudes of responders conforming on one or more trials. Participants who conform to the majority on at least 50% of the trials are reported reacting with what Ash called a distortion of perception. These participants who made up the distinct majority of 12 subjects expressed the belief that the actors' answers were correct and were apparently unaware that the majority were giving incorrect answers. Among the other participants who trials most expressed the Ash term distortion of judgment, these participants concluded after a number of trials that they must be wrongly interpreting the stimuli and that the majority must be right leading them to answer with the majority. These individuals were characterized by low levels of confidence. The final group of participants who yielded on the last, at least some of the trials, exhibited a distortion of action. These subjects reported that they knew what the correct answer was, but conformed with the majority group simply because they didn't want to seem out of step by not going along with the rest. And this is what we are seeing in society. The political correctness it is. Just crazy. Variations on the original paradigm. In subsequent research experiments, Ash explored several variations on the paradigm of his 1951 study. 1955, he reported on work with 123 male students from three different universities. Second paper in 1956 also consisted of 123 male college students from three different universities. Ash did not state that this it was, in fact, the same sample as reported in his 1955 paper. The principal difference is that the 1956 paper includes an elaborate account of his interviews with participants across these all these papers. Ash found the same results. Participants conform to the majority group in about one third of all critical trials. Presence of a true partner. Ash found that the presence of a true partner, a real participant, or another actor told to give the correct response to each question decrease conformity. In studies that had one act to give correct responses to questions, only 5% of the participants would continue to answer with the majority. And this is probably why they're trying to shut down all of these people that are bringing the real news, the real truth, because this is what happens when they start doing this. People, you know, they don't conform as much. Withdrawal of a partner. Ash also examined whether the removal of a true partner pathway through experiment of influence participants' level of conformity. He found low levels of conformity during the first half of the experiment. However, once the partner left the room, the level of conformity increased dramatically. Majority size. Ash also examined whether decreasing or increasing majority size had an influence on the participants' level of conformity. He also discovered that a very small size opposing group of actors were associated with low levels of yielding. Increasing the opposing group, two or three persons, increased conformity substantially. Increases beyond three persons, either four, five, six, etc., did not further increase conformity. Written responses. Ash also a very method of participants responding in studies where actors verbalize their responses about the real participant responding and allowed, but the real participant responded in writing at the end of each trial. Conformity singly decreased when shifting from public to written response. Interpretations. So I'm just going to quickly show you this video.
Hash experiment is one of psychology's oldest and most popular. A volunteer is told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. What he doesn't know is that the other participants are actors. So this is what I was just okay. Show you quickly here the experiment and what they do. Oh. A volunteer is told that he's taking part. When this bloke in the red shirt is the volunteer. This is what the experiment was that was done at the university, three different universities. Same test. For some reason it's not playing too well. I, I think you get the gist. I'll just leave links in the description. Just doesn't want to play. Told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. Notice how, like, the line is different. So all these are just actors to lie. He's the only one telling the truth. And then they may last. The volunteer will be monitored to see if he gives the correct answer or if he goes along with the opinion of the group. This is the problem with peer pressure, group pressure. But see, he doesn't want to go against the group. He knows the answer. Two. One. And he's like, everyone, is, you know it's two. Why is all... Or if he goes along with the opinion of the group. Okay. Alright, I'll go with you. Three. So this is where he's like, yep. I'll go yeah, with you. I'll conform. Repeated many times, and results have been announced uh, over and again. We will conform to the group again. We're very social creatures. We're very much aware of. And this is the problem. Uh, we want to be liked. We don't want to be seen to rock the boat. So we will go along with the group, even if we don't do the same. That's the problem. Yep. So yeah, this is the problem that society. It's being used against us when we should be coming together. Uh, but we don't because of people listening to all the false narratives. Interpretations, normal influence versus refer informal influence. The Ash conformity experiments are often interpreted as evidence for the power of the conformity and nar normative social influence, where no normative influence was Willingness to conform publicly to attain social reward and avoid social punishment. From this perspective, the results are viewed as a striking example of people publicly endorsing the group response despite knowing full well that they are aware of endorsing a correct response. In contrast, John Turner and colleagues argue that the interpretation of the Ash Conformity experiments as normal influence is inconsistent with the data. They put out point out that post-experiment interviews reveal that participants experienced uncertainty about their judgment during the experiments, although the correct answers appeared obvious to the researchers, this was not necessarily the experience of the participants. Subsequent research has demonstrated similar patterns of conformity where participants were anonymous and thus not subjected to social punishment or reward for the basis of their response. From this perspective, the Ash Conformity experiments are viewed as evidence of the self-categorized theory account for social influences, otherwise known as the theory of for an informal influence. Here, the observed conformity is an example of the depersonalization process whereby people expect to hold the same opinion as others in their group and will often adapt those opinions. So everyone is, you know, they take away the individual person. Social comparison theory, the conformity demonstrated in the Ash experience is problematic for social comparison theory. The social comparison theory suggests that when seeking to validate opinions and abilities, people will first turn to direct observation. If direct observation is ineffective or not available, people will then turn to compare it to others for other validation. In other words, the social comparison theory predicts that social reality testing will arise when physical reality testing yields uncertainty. The Ash Conformity experiments demonstrate that uncertainty can arise as an outcome of social reality testing. More broadly, these inconsistencies have been used to support the position that the, the theological distance distinction between social reality testing and physical reality testing is untenable. Selective representation in textbooks and in the media. Ash's 1956 report emphasized the predominance of independence over the yielding, saying 
The facts that were being judged were under the circumstances the most decisive. However, a 1990 survey U.S. social psychology textbooks found that most ignored independence instead of putting a misleading summary of the results as reflecting the complete power of the situation to produce conformity of behaviour and belief. A 2015 survey found no change with just 1 to 20 major texts reporting the most participant responses defied majority opinion. No text mentioned that 95% of the subjects defied the majority at least once. 19 of the 20 textbooks of the 20 textbooks made no mention of Ash's interview data, in which many participants said they were certain all along that the actors were wrong. This portrayal of Ash's studies was suggested to fit with the social narrative, psychology narratives of situalization, obedience, and conformity, to neglect of recondition, recognition of disobedience and immoral commands, e.g. disobedience shown by participants in Milgram's studies, Desire for fair treatment, e.g. resistance to try any, showed by many participants in the Stanford Prison Studies. And this is where they had um, people volunteer that went into prison and self-determination. Determination. So you've got the bandwagon effect, collective responsibility, communal. So they got a name for everything, like everything else, every month of the year we have, you know, something going on. And this was done in the 50s. I, I really so, think something happened around 42, 44 that changed our reality. Something big happened around there. No later than 48. But this just shows that the media and the textbooks, the universities, the colleges, everything, they know what to say to get all the students to be on their side. They know what to do. And it's not really hard to control the population from within. We, we see it happen in the late 30s when um, the other man that uh, decided to gain power. Um, yeah, so we're seeing it again. Okay, we're a bear on the world. Thanks for watching. You have a good day. Bye-bye.